Hello, hello, everyone. This is Man United inside again on it. Welcome back again. Ineos have 13 Manchester United players to build a squad around. Sir Dave Brailsford is leading a review of the sporting department at Man United and a new sporting director is likely to have a big influence in the summer. As NEOS look into the football business model at Manchester United, their findings aren't exactly going to be a surprise. We already know what Sir Jim Ratcliffe thinks of the club's approach over the past decade. They have been that damn manic in the sport for far too long. That is the phrase Ratcliffe used in 2019 when discussing his boyhood club and the previous four or so years have only strengthened that categorization. United spending is getting more haphazard rather than more sensible. You only need to look at the 85 million pounds lavished on Anthony for evidence of that or handing a 30-year-old Casemiro a five-year deal. The appointment of John Mato as football director hasn't really led to a significant change of approach. That's why Mato is likely to find himself in a new role once Sir Dave Brailsford has completed his review of the club's football operations. A sporting director will probably slot into the structure above Mato. The responsibility of that individual will be to start producing value for United, something they have badly lacked in a decade where around £1.4 billion has been spent for such little reward. That was what Ratcliffe was getting at in 2019. Ineos never wants to be the damn money in town or never, never. They, United, are in quite a big pickle as a business, he told the Times. They haven't got the manager selection right, all Gunnar Solskjaer haven't bought well. They have been the damn money, which you see with players like Fred. To be fair to Fred, he recovered from a wretched first season to at least contribute during his time at Old Trafford without ever looking like a £50 million midfielder. But then very few of the current squad are looking like value for money either. Brailsford's audit of the Football department will look at the processes in place at the moment and how so much cash has been squandered, but when a sporting director begins work they will look at the squad and work out where to build from, who is a long-term bet at United and whose race has been run. The reality is that if the squad is drawn up on a whiteboard at the moment, there might only be a dozen or so players inked into the staying put column, then some of those are only doing so because their careers are in the infancy and there is a feeling there has to be more to come. Andre Onana and Alte Beinda will remain as goalkeepers, even if the number one hasn't been entirely convincing so far and Beinda is yet to be seen. Tom Heaton's contract expires in the summer and he is likely to leave. In defense, Diogo Dalet's five-year contract might make him a long-term bet and Luke Shaw is one of the most consistent and reliable performers in the squad. At centre-back, Lisandro Martinez's absence has been keenly felt this year and Harry Maguire's performances make him a solid bet to remain and contribute, especially when Rafael Varane looks a certainty to leave and Victor Lindelof could be sold in the summer, having had the one-year option taken on his contract. Bruno Fernandes might divide opinion as captain but he is regularly United's best player. Kabi Menu is an academy gem with a lot to offer and Christian Eriksen is a reliable squad player. Mason Mount's Old Trafford career is yet to get going, but at £55 million there has to be more to come and it is too soon to write him off. Rasmus Hodgland might have only opened his Premier League account on Boxing Day but he was a £72 million bet on the future, so there is no point in losing faith now and even if the goals have been hard to come by, there have been enough signs of promise. Alejandro Ganocho is another with a future at Old Trafford and Marcus Rashford has enough credit in the bank to survive for now. Some of the more difficult. Eric Ten Hag has made a demand that Sir Jim Ratcliffe might not accept at Manchester United. Sir Jim Ratcliffe is gaining control of football operations at Man United and Ineos will change the club's transfer policy. I set requirements in advance about how I want to work, Eric Ten Hag told a Dutch newspaper following his appointment as Manchester United manager in the spring of 2022. If they aren't granted that I won't do it. I am ultimately responsible and accounted for the results. I don't want to be the sole ruler, I stand for cooperation, but control in transfers is a condition for me. Ten Hag signed Tyrell Malaysia, Christian Eriksen, Lisandro Martinez, Anthony and Casemiro in his first summer in charge and only the latter arrived without having once played in the Eredivisie. 
There were waffles and bottles of Heineken in the press conference room at Old Trafford when Ten Hag was unveiled to the media and that signaled a Dutch revolution in Manchester for a second time. The difference between Ten Hag and Louis van Gaal is that although the 72-year-old recruited players with their DVC pedigree, his transfer policy was not solely based on signing players from that division. Only Case Miro, Rasmus Hodgland, Zjani Evans and Altai Beinda don't and anyone who has watched the Eredivisie should know the standard of the division is a world away from the Premier League. It's therefore dangerous to operate with such a Dutch heavy influenced transfer policy and that explains why the club's recruitment has continued to be hit and miss over the last 18 months. Anthony has been a particularly disastrous signing and he doesn't reflect well on his manager, who pushed hard to sign him despite Ajax continually increasing their asking price throughout negotiations. Although it's believed scouts first valued Anthony at around £25 million and he scored just 8 goals in his final era DVC season, the deal worth £85.5 million was agreed and Ten Hag got his reunion. Just a year and a half since swapping Amsterdam for Manchester and Anthony could be remembered as the worst signing of the last decade. It is beyond belief he commanded such a large price tag. Ten Hag persisted with starting him last season despite his poor performances, but he's become impossible to defend and, rather remarkably, he hasn't contributed a goal or an assist in this campaign. Sir Jim Ratcliffe once described the £50 million spent on Fred as dumb money and it would be fascinating to hear his thoughts on the signing of Anthony because his language would likely be colourful. The jury also remains out on Mount who was signed for an initial £55 million. The midfielder has not looked suited to playing in a deeper role and it's hoped he can prove growing doubts wrong when he returns from injury. The bottom line is giving Ten Hag, who has a veto of any scenes written in his contract, such a large influence over transfer hasn't worked and the recruitment strategy is about to change with Ratcliffe on. Board Ratcliffe is gaining control over football operations after agreeing a deal to acquire a minority stake at Old Trafford and his investment has the potential to transform the club because spending money has never been United's problem, it's been how the millions have been wasted. A manager at an elite club should be guided by the sporting director, not given everything he wants in the sweet shop, although that's not to suggest Ten Hag should have completely no say on transfers. It's only healthy for a manager to be consulted and to have a veto on signings. Ratcliffe is expected to accommodate this but it certainly seems Ten Hag will have reduced power with transfers. That is a compromise he'll have to accept and Ten Hag doesn't usually compromise.